Hello and welcome to Dice Encounters and today we're talking about being a player in Soulbound. Yes, so today we're talking about tips for being a player in Soulbound. If you want to be a GM, then go and check out the GM video. You can also check out the uh, Let's Play that we did for the Shadows in the Mist campaign. But if you're joining a campaign and you're about to become a player in Soulbound, then here are some tips to get you started. So tip number one is make sure you understand the archetypes and the factions. Um, there are some very interesting factions in Soulbound. They're not your normal fantasy uh, races and sort of uh, tropes. As we discussed in the GM video, you've got elves who live underwater. You've got dwarves who fly airships in big suits of armor with big guns. Um, it's quite unusual. There are some archetypes which are quite faction agnostic, which you can play if you want to play it safe. Um, but if you want to delve into the really cool races, then really uh, read the section in the rule book, really get clued up on them. There are some great Black Library books for Age of Sigma, which cover things like the Ideneth Deepkin and the Lumineth, which I really recommend. Um, also, you will find different characters of those factions within those books. So even if there is a stereotypical style of that archetype, you'll be able to find some more interesting different characters in there as well. My second tip uh, for being a player in Soulbound is to look at, look at short-term goals and long-term goals. Short-term goals will get you one XP per session if you play them enough, which can pretty much double your XP gain over the course of the adventure. Long-term goals can get you 10 XP, which is a pretty big boost. Uh, you can get some fancy new feats and talents and things towards the end of the campaign, which is always nice and narrative, it feels really cool. So how do you go about your short-term goal? Because I, I understand that it's quite a unique thing to this system, and there's only a few systems that actually use this kind of thing. D&D especially does not let players set the goals that get them XP. Um, so it's always a tricky balance between uh, making them too easy and feeling like you're cheating, and also making them too hard that you can never actually achieve them. So talking to the GM about it is key. Uh, potentially think about it in between sessions, if not at the beginning of the session. Um, think about what your character wants to do, where their head's at, um, and try and separate it from the main mission. And this will come in when you make your character as well. Try and have interests and drives for your character. Why are they here? Why do they do what they do? Why are they part of the binding? How do they feel about it? Um, who are their friends? Who are their enemies? What are their hobbies? Um, that will drive your short-term goals and long-term goals. If your character is a chef, a budding chef, and they want to do a short-term goal to collect interesting ingredients whilst they're in a jungle, then uh, that's a valid short-term goal, right? Because it's baked into the character. The GM's not gonna say that you're just setting a really easy goal of picking some mushrooms in jungle because it fits what you said previously, right? My third tip is for those who are interested in playing spellcasters in Age of Sigma, Soulbound. Um, in Soulbound, you can create your own spells, uh, which is really cool. The spell list you get are only a few spells long per school of magic. So being able to create your own spells that fit what your character is like, how they play, uh, and also what your party needs as well, is really, really cool. For example, our Knight and Cantor player, um, he was really like getting in the face of the enemy, uh, so he sort of had a lot of spells that were about stunning enemies, getting really close, punching them with lightning fists, um, which really seemed to fit his character, going on a rage as a celestial vindicator, getting up in the enemy's face, stunning them and smashing them, um, and letting the rest of the party sort of do the killing blows, but he was really like the wrecking ball who, who went in first. And on that topic as well, Speaking of that knight in Cantor, he also developed a lot of spells that used buffs and debuffs. And these are really strong because of the ladder system that's in Soulbound. Um, essentially, for your melee and ranged and defense, you have a rating that is on a ladder. So it goes poor, good, great, extraordinary, uh, supreme, I think, or something like that. Um, but basically, if you are higher than the enemy on the ladder, then you need lower dice to roll. If you're lower, then you need higher dice to roll, making it harder. And the way that buffs and debuffs work is that they will move characteristics up and down this ladder, right? So for example, in our final battle, the enemy, of course, was at the top of the ladder. The players were kind of in the middle. After a few tactical buffs and debuffs, uh, the strongest damage dealer in the party was, instead of being two steps below, so he's hitting on sixes, was now two steps above 
the big bad enemy, so they were hitting on twos. Incredibly powerful stuff. My next tip is to think about party composition. Think about the kind of damage that you need to deal. We've talked about buffs, we've talked about stunning being very useful, um, but also armor rending can be incredibly useful as well. A lot of enemies, big scary enemies, will have two, three points of armor, um, and you'll probably be dealing five to 10 points of damage, sort of on average, depending on the archetype. So that is pretty much halving nearly all the damage that you're doing. Also in terms of uh, skills, you want to have a balanced party so that you're covering different areas of skills. Things like crafting are really useful, being an intelligent character who can work out problems. Being someone who's very good in the wild, has got survival and nature skills will be, is really useful. Someone who's got stealth, obviously. Someone who's very uh, good at persuasion, has got good charisma. All these sort of staples of, of uh, role-playing games. And my final tip for the players, the players who want to play in Soulbound, is when you're buying talents, um, really consider the talents that you're you're picking up. And it does it seems obvious, but some of the talents um, can be very stackable, can be very uh, work well together. For example, there's some very strong defensive buffs that you can play on top of each other to become very strong defensively as a character. But also maybe resist the temptation to go into full on combat. Talents, a lot of the talents boost your combat quite a bit, um, but there are also some very interesting social and sort of exploration talents that you can use as well, and even downtime talents as well that make your character a more rounded individual. And also, the talents are quite unique and quite powerful in Soulbound, so building the characters around what their talents are, their natural talents, uh, is a good way to go. And also for my final tip, I did talk about this in the GM video, but it's worth mentioning again here to the players. Um, your power level when you start Soulbound is probably about level 5 D&D. Um, and if you don't really have that frame of reference, um, you will be more significantly more powerful than the average person on the street. Um, you'll be able to beat up guards and that kind of thing quite easily. The idea is that you can kind of plow through these minion type enemies, um, but there will be characters and enemies who are of your level and even more powerful than you are, but you're not supposed to be encountering them all the time. So if you think the game is being a little bit too easy and you think that uh, your character is a bit too powerful um, and you, you sort of want to have be a bit more challenged, then consider that the GM is just softening you up for a more interesting fight. And that is it, that is my tips for the players of Soulbound. Let me know what you think, have you got any tips for playing Soulbound? I think it's a really great system, um, I really liked it a lot. You can watch our Shadows in the Mist run through on this channel, you can watch the GM video if you're interested in being a GM, maybe you want to be, maybe you want to start a campaign in Soulbound. Um, I'm looking forward to playing the next the campaign uh, very much. And I hope you had as much fun playing it as my group did, um, and I will see you in the next one.